Hello everyone, it is me, Copper Puppy. One, two, three, four, back along with another video. And today I have for you guys how do airplanes fly? Now, airplanes are sleek aerodynamic works of art, as we all know. But what makes the gravity stop working, so to speak? As we know, gravity is always pushing things down, pushing things down so that they don't go up and float away all over the place. We know that because nothing in this room floats. If something in this room were to float, there would be no gravity. But how do airplanes fly away from the ground while gravity is still pushing them down? That's what we're here to find out today using this model I've built. We all know that propellers or jet engines are the ones that are going to give us the, our thrust. The tail section is where our drag is going to be, over in this area over here. And our wings are what's going to give us lift. Lift, and then gravity pushes the airplane down. Let's say we have a jet engine that can produce 40,000 pounds of thrust. What does that mean? It means that that's how many pounds of thrust are going to come out of that engine. That's how much oomph the engine is going to have, 40,000 pounds of it. Which initially means that that's how much that one engine is going to be able to move, is 40,000 pounds. Let's say we have four engines all operating at full power, and each of them can carry 40,000 pounds of thrust. That means that will give us a total combined thrust of 160,000 pounds of thrust. Still, that's a lot of pounds of thrust. But how do we get it over the wings to make the airplane actually lift up? Well, first, you have to get the air flowing over the wings. If we look at a wing... It has a shape to it, so to speak. If we look at a wing, you can see that it is not square in front. It has a curve to it. Now, with the curve of the wing, it's going to slice the air that comes to it in half. Putting air over top of the wing and air underneath the wing. And then over here, the air is going to slide off. If it was squared... There would be a lot of drag on this big piece. And that's why some aircraft come with de-ice boots, which are black boots, so to speak, that sit on the wing, and when ice builds up, you pop them, and they expand, breaking up all the ice and putting it over, giving you a clean airfoil. But still, what makes the airplane go forward and fly? Propeller has a lot to do with it. If we lose engine, if we lose the engine, we can't go flying because there is no thrust pushing, propelling the airplane forward. We are now a glider. So, but still, what makes this airplane fly? With the propeller, it's going to propel the airplane forward, making there to be enough wind coming over the wing and coming over the elevator section. An elevator section isn't square either. You can see that there is a little bit of a curve to it. And so is there here, there's a curve. If it was flat, it wouldn't work as well. Let's take the Bell aircraft, the one who officially hit the speed of sound without dying. If here's our trim tabs on our elevator, the black lines outline them, and this whole piece would move on the bell. So if it needed to climb, instead of just these little flaps moving like on a Cessna, instead of these just moving, giving them a little bit of pull back, this whole thing moved. This whole thing went up and down, up and down, up and down. So, if the airplane needed to climb or descend, if he wanted to descend, he could just push the airplane's yoke down, 
which would then push the front down and the back up, clearing the airfoil up like that. And this always wants to be flat, so it's going to be flat, and it's going to go down like that. That's what gives us our pitch. That's how the airplane climbs and descends. This provides thrust, propelling the airplane forward, putting air over the wings, over to the elevator, pushing the elevator down, is going to make your airplane get off the ground. Now we're going to talk about stalling. Stalling is when a wing, or wings, or your wings, uh, stop getting enough wind to keep the airplane aloft. It's when there is not enough force of the airplane, that the airplane is now too heavy to be propelled through the air. You will fall out of the sky like a rock. So with the propeller turned slightly, you want to keep that spinning as much as possible to keep sucking the air in and pushing it out, giving us speed. Flaps are another big part. Flaps increase lift. So it's going to increase how much you can climb and lower your stall speed. By extending the wing, let's say we had engines underneath here, like on a C-17 Flying Fortress. Their flaps can come all the way down, giving them a helicopter effect, which will push the jet stream down, being letting the airplane fly slower, and giving it a softer landing, depending on the pilot. If this nose piece was a block, let's say it was just a block like this, that would be a very big problem, because then there would be not too much air coming over there, because it would all get blocked by that block sitting here, and go across and escape. That's why it gives it that cone sort of formation to it. The tail is there to keep you stabilized. Without the tail, you would constantly be flat. You would be just spinning out of control like this. Because you have nothing to keep the airplane steady. That's what this flat little black area on here is for. That is the rudder. That is what's going to keep the airplane when you're taking off on center line, not swerving over this way nor this way. It's going to keep it straight like an arrow on center line. All the forces, the thrust, the drag, the lift, and gravity are what makes this airplane fly. If we take the engine away, it becomes a glider, and you have to keep the speed up or else you will stall like we went over. Wing tips are going to help with wing tip vortices. Vortices are little invisible tornadoes that come off the wing tip. If, if a little Cessna 172 is following a Boeing 747, and gets into its vortice, it could spin the Cessna out of control, crashing it into the ground. That's how dangerous some of these vortices can be. That's why they put these on. Wingtips. They put wingtips on to minimize how much vortice comes off that wingtip. It's there to make sure that that Cessna doesn't spin out of control because of the wing vortice. There was a crash in Mexico one time. This Cessna Citation, I think it was, or maybe it was a Lear 45. I think it was a Lear 45, was following a 737 in for, to land at Mexico City. But the, the 737, or I can't remember what exact aircraft it was, had wing tip vortices going behind the aircraft for four or five miles. The little, the little Lear 45 got into that wing vortice, spun out of control, and crashed into a business district in Mexico. 
You can look it up on the internet. It's there. That's what I heard happened. I could be mistaken. Don't judge me, okay? So I think that's going to conclude our video for how airplanes fly. We have thrust, pushing the airplane forward. We have lift over top of the wings, up here on this part, down and on the wing, and on the elevator back here. We have our gravity, which is going to hold the airplane from floating away. And that's it. And the beta and delta mode of a propeller. So I'd like to finish this video off with saying thank you all so much for watching. If you did enjoy, please remember to leave a like down below under the video. And please read the description. Leave a comment if you want me to do more of these kind of videos. These science-y sort of videos, let's say. And if you want to see more content very soon, please subscribe. So, overall, have a great day. We'll talk to you all later. And bye-bye.